How is it going guys? Today we are finally cracking open the FA24 short block from the GR86. This is where we're going to see all the damage and where all the, the metal bits in our oil came from. I don't have uh, this block fully stripped down just yet. Uh, we still have some work to do, so let's go ahead and get to it. Actually, before we dive into it, scroll down real quick and comment your prediction on which cylinder has the most damage. Don't cheat and skip ahead, okay? Just scroll down, comment, and we'll see if you're right. We'll flip this over and get the upper part of the oil pan off. So the pickup tube is held in with three bolts. One of them is accessible when you take the oil pan off, but what sucks is the other two are only accessible if you take the timing cover off. So if you end up taking your oil pan off to clean the pickup tube, you can't actually take it off. You'll just need to stick something into the opening and pick out whatever's in there. We've got access to the rods now and we can figure out if you guys guessed correctly. Now, if you take a close look, you can already tell which one isn't in the best of shape, but we're still gonna go through one cylinder at a time. We'll start with cylinder number one. I'm gonna grab this, give it a good shake. Solid cylinder two, good as well. Cylinder three, that sound right there is not good. <laughs> That is our problem. That is the result of a spun rod bearing. And as you can see, or hopefully you can see, the discoloration on the rod here from the heat that built up from all the friction uh, compared to the rest of them that don't have that discoloration. Let's check for just for the heck of it. And that's good as well. So cylinder number three is our problem. If you guess cylinder number three, good on you. Here's a big difference with the FA24 compared to the FA20. So on the previous gen, when you're disassembling the block, you can unbolt the rods from the crankshaft from the underside of the engine and then just push out of the piston with the rod connected out of the cylinder. We can't do that here. What we need to do instead, similar to the EJ series motors, is disconnect the pistons from the rods using these access holes on the front and on the rear one right there and one right there. And once those pistons are out, we can separate the case halves and then we can unbolt the rods from the crankshaft. Let's get this thing transferred over to the table. Oh, that's heavy. On the front of the engine, the access holes are open, but on the back we have a cover and plug to remove, and I might as well take this plate off as well. Oh boy, that's not good. It's not really a project until you run into a rounded or broken off bolt or a screw, right? So I ended up rounding off these Allen bolts that hold this cover in place. Um, what we're gonna do is hammer in, this is actually a Torx bit, we're just gonna hammer this in here in hopes that uh, it'll bite and we can remove these bolts. Seems solid enough. Come on, baby. Hey, look at that. Like a dream. Try not to hammer my finger. Oh, like that. All right, let's get the big boy next. I 
That was not as tight as I thought it was gonna be. What we're gonna do now is turn the crankshaft until the piston pins in cylinder one and two line up with these two access ports. Trying to give you guys a better look here. This is what it looks like when you have the pins lined up. You can see there is a snap ring right here that we need to remove. And that's gonna allow us to either pull or push the pins out. Now Subaru sells a special tool to do this, but it's super expensive. So uh, we are going to improvise. We'll just use some needle nose pliers to get these snap rings out. With the snap rings removed on the front side, we're gonna use the access holes on the back of the engine and insert a long screwdriver and then lightly tap the end to push those pins out the front. I went ahead and removed the other two wrist pins so now we can separate the case halves. There's gonna be some bolts up top here that we need to remove and then we can move on to the case bolts which we need to loosen in a certain pattern. So let's go ahead and get these out of the way. The rest of the bolts are over on the passenger side. Like I said, there's 10 of them. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna be loosening them up slowly uh, until we can take them out and then crack this thing open. All right, we got all the bolts out. Now it's time to just start whacking this thing with a hammer to try and separate the two case halves and break the seal of our TV. Oh yeah. I've got them separated. I'll take the crankshaft off here in a little bit, but I wanted to give you guys another look at this. Take a look at the difference in color on this rod compared to this one here. It's so much darker and you can get a better look at how much movement. Look at that. That is terrible. <laughs> When I pulled the crankshaft off, the main bearings right here are actually stuck on here. And I'm guessing it's not gonna look very good when I pull these off. Let's see. Oh yeah. Look at that. That is definitely where some of the metal came from in our oil. That, oh my God. Let's look at the other one. Yep. That'll, that'll do it. We've got everything disassembled, crankshaft, pistons, rods are out, and it's a little bit worse than I thought it was gonna be, guys. Uh, the first thing we saw, which I already showed you, is the main bearings. No bueno. This one as well over here. And now if we look at a normal rod setup, you've got the rod itself, the rod cap and the rod bearing. But if we take a look at cylinder number three, there is no longer a rod bearing in there. So all of that metal got chewed up and dispersed throughout the engine and we managed to crack 
the rod cap. Now, if we take a look at the journal on the crankshaft, it is chewed up pretty damn bad as there is no bearing in there whatsoever. So that looks absolutely disgusting. And there you have it guys, that is the FA24 short block teardown. We figured out that we spun a rod bearing in cylinder three and the main bearings as well as cracked the rod caps. And not only spun a rod bearing, we completely made it vanish. <laughs> I'm glad we're putting a new short block in the car. I wish it was a long block so I didn't have to do as much work, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, I'm hoping to have the car up and running soon. In the meantime, we'll use my GR86. If you want even more content, you can check out my personal channel as well. If you guys have any questions, as always, comment down below. I'm happy to help. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.